Chapter 12, A Stormy Day. One day, late in the autumn, my master had a long journey to go on business. I was put into the dog cart and John went with his master. I always liked to go in the dog cart. It was so light and the high wheels ran along so pleasantly. There had been a great deal of rain and now the wind was very high and blew the dry leaves across the road in a shower. We went along merrily till we came to the toll bar and the low wooden bridge. The river banks were rather high and the bridge, instead of rising, went across just level so that in the middle, if the river was full, the water would be nearly up to the woodwork and planks. But as there were good substantial rails on each side, people did not mind it. The man at the gate said the river was rising fast and he feared it would be a bad night. Many of the meadows were under water and in one low part of the road, the water was halfway up to my knees, but the bottom was good, and my master drove gently, so it was no matter. When we got to the town, of course, I had a good bait, but as the master's business engaged him a long time, we did not start for home till rather late in the afternoon. The wind was then much higher, and I heard the master say to John he had never been out in such a storm, and so I thought, as we went along the skirts of a wood where the great branches were swaying about like twigs and the rushing sound was terrible. I wish we were out of this wood, said my master. Yes, sir, said John. It would be rather awkward if one of these branches came down upon us. The words were scarcely out of his mouth when there was a groan and a crack and a splitting sound and tearing, crashing down amongst the other trees came an oak torn up by the roots and it fell right across the road just before us. I will never say I was not frightened, for I was. I stopped still, and I believe I trembled. Of course, I did not turn round or run away. I was not brought up to that. John jumped out and was in a moment at my head. That was a very near touch, said my master. What's to be done now? Well, sir, we can't drive over that tree, nor yet get around it. There will be nothing for it but to go back to the four crossways, and that will be a good six miles before we get round to the wooden bridge again. It will make us late, but the horse is fresh. So back we went, and round by the crossroads, but by the time we got to the bridge, it was very nearly dark. We could just see that the water was over the middle of it. But as that happened, sometimes when the floods were out, Master did not stop. We were going along at a good pace, but the moment my feet touched the first part of the bridge, I felt sure there was something wrong. I dared not go forward, and I made a dead stop. Go on, beauty, said my master, and he gave me a touch with the whip, but I dared not stir. He gave me a sharp cut. I jumped, but I did not go forward. There's something wrong, sir, said John, and he sprang out of the dog cart and came to my head and looked all about. He tried to lead me forward. Come on, beauty, what's the matter? Of course I could not tell him, but I knew very well that the bridge was not safe. Just then the man at the toll gate on the other side ran out of the house, tossing a torch about like one mad. Ho, 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 hello, stop, he cried. What's the matter, shouted my master. The bridge is broken in the middle and part of it is carried away. If you come on, you'll be into the river. Thank God, said my master. You beauty, said John, and took the bridle and gently turned me round to the right-hand road by the riverside. The sun had set some time. The wind seemed to have lulled off after that furious blast which tore up the tree. It grew darker and darker, stiller and stiller. I trotted quietly along, the wheels hardly making a sound on the soft road. For a good while, neither Master nor John spoke. And then Master began in a serious voice. I could not understand much of what they said, but I found they thought if I had gone on as the Master wanted me, most likely the bridge would have given way under us, and horse, chase, Master and man would have fallen into the river. And as the current was flowing very strongly, and there was no light and no help at hand, it was more than likely we should all have been drowned. Master said God had given men reason by which they could find out things for themselves. 
but he had given animals knowledge which did not depend on reason and which was much more prompt and perfect in its way and by which they had often saved the lives of men. John had many stories to tell of dogs and horses and the wonderful things they had done. He thought people did not value their animals half enough nor make friends of them as they ought to do. I'm sure he makes friends of them if ever a man did. At last we came to the park gates and found the gardener looking out for us. He said that mistress had been in a dreadful way ever since dark, fearing some accident had happened, and that she had sent James off on justice, the roan cob, towards the wooden bridge to make inquiry after us. We saw a light at the hall door and at the upper windows, and as we came up, mistress ran out and saying, Are you really safe, my dear? Oh, I have been so anxious, fancying all sorts of things. Have you had no accident? No, my dear. But if your black beauty had not been wiser than we were, we should all have been carried down the river at the wooden bridge. I heard no more as they went into the house and John took me to the stable. Oh, what a good supper he gave me that night. A good bran mash and some crushed beans with my oats and such a thick bed of straw. And I was glad of it for I was tired.